Okay, welcome to Unit 11, Capture Your Class with Video. And um, if you want to get this PowerPoint for yourself, you can click the link below in the description for a copy of the PowerPoint at the TPT store. And if you also want to um, do a, a, a boot camp for your school district or something like that, you can also find a link in the description below as well. So now, Unit 11 is broken down into three different sections. The first one is find high-quality educational content on YouTube create educational content on YouTube and create the optimal viewing experience so um, let's get to the first one right which is find high quality educational content on YouTube so here's a video clip and to prepare yourself for this section it's important to know the first six tasks right from one two three four five six it's uh, this video is embedded into the PowerPoint but you could um, also find it on my YouTube channel so to get started I would go over those six tasks and um, hello YouTube so you can begin your lesson here's here's a couple of ways that you could use YouTube as an educator right so you could begin your lesson with what's called a, a hook video so maybe if you're teaching a science class you could so show um, a great science experiment something to get their attention um, use videos to flip the classroom and I think this is really good for those uh, uh, upper level or mathematics courses when you have to deal with park testing like algebra 2 algebra 1 geometry there's so much that these kids have to learn and um, you only have such uh, you only have a certain amount of time in class with them that the only way to bridge that learning gap is to flip the classroom and and give content to them you know as as homework so that's that's also um, another way you could use these videos um, videos able to capture our students attention okay so these videos are good for engagement and as a teacher you can use filters through the search engine to find the right video lastly um, videos are easily shared and embedded um, with Google tools whether it be classroom sites forms slides remember G Suite has a tight integration with YouTube so if you're working on a slides presentation you can in easily integrate a YouTube video and I've, I think I just covered that in, in um, unit 10 okay so what do we know about YouTube? How do you utilize high quality content? Um, you can use it for direct instruction, just giving the videos out uh, to flip the classroom, to enhance student engagement, and um, the theory of multiple intelligences. I, I know there's um, it's uh, learning styles have been debunked, but uh, multiple intelligences are a little bit different. Um, Howard Gardner talks about eight different intelligences, right? So um, visual uh, learners can uh, benefit from uh, YouTube videos as well all right so finding saving and showing videos okay use the features of YouTube which are searching filtering and sharing to find the right video um, a YouTube channel now we're talking about just a channel for example like like my YouTube channel right that's a place where content creators host their own original videos my own content so every video that I have like like this particular video I made this myself I post it on my YouTube channel um, then, then you have what's called a playlist is another definition here. A playlist is just a collection of videos put together by a viewer. Okay, so you don't have to be a, a, a channel creator to make a playlist. You can make a playlist from videos from all over the, um, all over YouTube. Okay, and you could take one from one creator, one content creator, and you make your own, your own playlist, whatever you like. Kind of like when you do a, a music playlist. Um, all right, so you have to be able to perform the following tasks. Um, the links are here embedded in the PowerPoint. One, two, three, four. Um, but I'll, I'll also um, I'll go over them right now. So, okay. How do you filter a search? So up here, you see where it says transcription and translation. I, I typed in transcription and translation, which is part of a genetics class uh, for biology. And they'll give you a bunch of videos. From here, you can just click on this little thing that says filter. So you click the filter icon. And then you're able to filter from all these different things. So I, I took that out. Uh, I took uh, what you find on the YouTube and I created it here in this little slide right here. So you can filter by video, playlist, channel, movie. Check them all out. Uh, uh, HD, 4K subtitles, length, upload date, sorting. You can sort by rating, view count, relevance. So many different filters. You really got to make the most of it. Ah. Okay, um, save a, how do you save a YouTube video? All right, there's a bunch of different ways. One, take a look in the red. You can just click like. If you, if you like a video, it's saved to, to your like playlist. Um, you can also go the add button, which is down here. You see add to, it's in blue. If you click this button, so I'm watching a video on, um, 
I think this is translation. I'm watching a video on tra translation. I'll click add to, and then I can add, add it to my watch later playlist, right? Watch later is like a saved playlist. Or I could add it to any of these other playlists here. I've got math, algebra, things like that. Um, how do you save another user's playlist? Okay, so before we were just saving videos. Let's say you want to save somebody else's playlist. So this here is a playlist created by Khan, uh, it's Biology and, and Khan Academy. And if I want to save this playlist by them, once the playlist is playing, if you look here by the, by the red, okay, this little button right here with the three lines and the plus, that's save playlist. All I have to do is click that button and the playlist is saved. So again, right, how do you save a playlist? What did I just talk about? Well, one way is by liking it. Another way is by adding it to a, a different playlist. Or you can just add it to the watch later playlist, which is, which is like your own personal playlist of, you know, saving something. All right, let's not forget here. You can embed videos in forms and slides. Now, I went over this in unit, I believe it's four and definitely in unit 10, okay? To insert um, a YouTube video and slide, you just go to insert and then you'll see a little thing that says video. Forms, it's the it's, uh, same thing. You're on your form. If you look to the right, it says add to. You just click that and video will pop up. So don't forget, you can embed these videos in forms and slides. All right, so... Increase engagement with videos. Here's just an example from a history teacher, right? What do they do? They begin with a, a search, a YouTube search on the Civil War. They filter for history channels. They save a video with the Watch Later button. Embed that video in a Google Slides. They ask discussion videos on the slide. And then they can insert a playlist into form. So these are all just different ways to increase engagement. All right, the lesson check. Uh, which of the following tools would allow teachers to add follow-up uh, questions to a video and track which students completed the questions. So what do you think? The Google Form, right? Um, remember, Google Forms, you're, as, as I just said, you can embed videos in Google Forms. YouTube allows teachers to discover, watch, and share high-quality educational videos. Is that true? Of course it is, right? That's going to be yes, true. Which of the following G Suite apps have YouTube integration built in? So we were talking about YouTube integration, right? YouTube integration. YouTube works with what? It works with Google Classroom, Google Slides, Google Forms, Google Sites, right? Everything's integrated. Okay, so all of these integrate. You can embed videos into all four of these. Classroom, Slides, Forms, and Sites. Which of the following are filters that can be applied to a YouTube video search? This goes back to that one slide that I created with all the different filters, right? Do you remember what they are? Channel was one. And playlist was the other. There's no one for language or genre. All right, so now we're in the second section. Create educational content on YouTube. So um, this is also on my YouTube channel. you got to watch the entire video because it goes over all these tasks, right? Accessing playlists, view subscriptions, etc. and so forth. So you got to watch this entire video. Um, YouTube channels. Remember, channels are where content creators host their videos, right? I'm hosting this video on my channel. Anybody can be a content creator. Um, some popular channels include Khan Academy is, is one where you find a, 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 a broad, broad number of uh, uh subjects and, and uh, there's so many videos um, when you subscribe to a channel now this is kind of important if you click the bell so I want you to do that for this channel you click the bell and then you get an email whenever a new video is uploaded that way you don't you know you don't uh, you don't get lost in things like that um, YouTube supplies videos based on your likes and uh, whatever you watch and subscriptions so when you first go on YouTube there's you'll see a page there and it's what's called the what to watch page so what YouTube does is it, it takes it has like an algorithm from from what videos you've liked what you've watched and then it takes all that information and it creates a, 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 you know a number of videos that they suggest to you okay that's the what to watch page alright so you gotta be able to perform these tasks um, subscribing to channels accessing playlists creating playlists um, I have links right here Okay, if you click on them, it'll, it'll just take you right to it, to one of my videos. Those are quick links, right? All right, so to subscribe to a channel, okay, here's, here's a video I was watching on um, translation. If I want to subscribe, I just got to click the red subscribe button. Here you go, subscribe. Um, remember, you got to be watching the video. Um, 
Oh yeah, to create a playlist, you must be watching the video. So if I want to create a playlist, I'll watch the video. I'll click Add to button, which is right here again, right? So the red is to subscribe. If I want to create a playlist, I'm going to go Add to, and then I'm going to create new playlist here. Now if I add it to one of these, like Math Foundations, okay, that's just going to add it to an old video. If I want to create a new playlist, I'll start with my first video, then I'll go Create New Playlist. Um, subscribe to YouTube channels. We know Khan Academy's one. You might want to subscribe to Six Science. Crash Course, I really don't like, but Google Fundamentals Trainings, talk, they talk about it. So you simply click on the subscribe button. That button right there. Okay, edit a playlist. Um, first, select the chosen playlist, right? So take a look over here. I, I selected this playlist, Math, SAT Math 2017. And then um, you can rearrange videos. So what I did here is I actually grabbed, you can't see it, but there's like a three dots here. I hold down on this thing and I just pull it up to, to rearrange where I want these questions to go, these SAT math questions. Um, in purple, in the right hand, on the right-hand side, you'll see add videos. I can add more videos. I can adjust playlist settings in this dark red box right here. And I can share the playlist by clicking share. Okay, and then you can email it, you can share it through social media, all different uh, methods. Okay, the YouTube guide. If you want to know what the guide is, it's on that left-hand side, right? Just take a look over here. This is when I first get onto YouTube. Um, um, on the left-hand side, you'll find playlists under the library. So here's library, and it'll start with your history, watch later purchases. But then here goes my first playlist, Algebra 2. If I want to see more playlists, I'll just click Show More. But the playlists are right here in Library. And then Subscriptions are right below that. So I'm subscribed to Khan Academy, Crash. I don't like that, but I'm still subscribed to it. All right, Sharing a Playlist. There's several different ways you can share a playlist. Uh, you can share it by a link. Take a look right here. Here's the link. You can share a playlist by email. You see right here it says Email. You can embed. If I press embed, I can embed the playlist. And social media. Take a look here. You've got Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Um, I am on Twitter. You can find me at, um, I think it's just at Frank Avella. I think that's it. I don't know if it's, it's I don't think it's .com. But you can find me on Twitter. All right. Um, how can teachers differentiate instruction with YouTube? So how can you differentiate? It's a big question here. Um, you can build upon existing skills by subscribing to YouTube channels and a curating content playlist. So subscribe to a channel for students, maybe um, you know some remediation in, in um, English learning or something like that. And as the videos come in, you curate these videos into a nice playlist to help individual students. Um, use the notes feature on playlists. You can leave guiding questions. Deliver a playlist to individual students or groups. Remember, you can email it to one student or a group of students. And um, using playlists allows teachers to spend more time with each group of students, right? So if, if you have one student working, one group working on a playlist, you could spend your time working with, I don't know, an individual student or another group of students. So see what we came up with here. Um, teachers subscribe to channels and they receive updates when new uh, videos are published. Uh, teachers can take these videos and organize them into a playlist for their subject. Uh, with playlists, teachers can share all the videos at one time. And lastly, there's a section for teachers to make notes on each video. So this, this is just some ways for educators to utilize uh, YouTube videos. All right, the lesson check. Which of the following best describes someone who can have a YouTube channel? Who's someone who can have a YouTube channel? Anybody, right? Any YouTube user that creates original videos. You can't steal somebody else's. And then you can create, or, or you just, if you just want to create playlists, you can do that as well. Um, which feature allows you to access all your subscriptions, playlists, and save playlists? What do you think? Sorry, went back real quick. Um, the guide, right? The guide's where you access subscriptions, playlists, save playlists. It's all on the left-hand side. Um, by subscribing to a channel, you will get updates every time that channel uploads a new video. Yes, don't forget to, to hit that little bell, too, to get those notifications. Which of the following are benefits of a playlist? It allows teachers to organize videos by topics. 
allows teachers to make notes about each video. This is in playlist now. And um, teachers can share a group of videos all at once. All right, the last section here. Create the optimal viewing experience. One second. With YouTube, teachers can provide a video to their students that can be accessed anytime, anywhere. Features allow you to visually optimize the viewing experience, and I'm going to go over that next. When they say optimize, they mean, they mean make it the best viewing experience for, the, for the, the students. Now, another feature is restrictive mode to protect younger students from, from violence and things like that that come up on, on YouTube, and that comes up a lot. Now, restrictive mode isn't 100%. I just want to put that out there. Um, restrictive mode helps filter out objectionable content, okay? It's necessary for younger grade students, okay? You get yourself in a lot of trouble. And um, it's connected to Google Safe Search. Um, below that is subtitles and closed captioning. What uh, Fundamentals Trainings recommends is to use this for English language learners, okay? So many of the captions will be in the same language as the original video, but as they'll see the words, it'll maybe help them comprehend more and learn more of the language. You know, having the words matching the, the audio. Excuse me, having the closed caption matching the, the audio. Um, view modes. All right. Use full screen to hide extra content and distractions. So when you first watch a YouTube video and you go to YouTube, it's not in full screen. So there's distraction on the right-hand side. So they'll offer you some videos to the right hand. There'll be videos underneath. And um, if you really want to focus in on the content, go full screen to see the whole thing. You should do that with this presentation. Um, full screen makes it easier to see the video as well as see the captions. And dealing with low bandwidth. If the internet is very slow, you can watch videos at a lower resolution, which will provide a better viewing experience. Right now, this is what they have, 720 pixels, 480 all the way down to 144. Um, so if you have a poor internet connection, you'd want to use a lower bandwidth. Okay. If you have great connection, go with the highest. Um, make the best of your viewing experience. All right. So if you take a look at, uh, it says one, two, three, four. So number one, this is found right here in the blue, right? All I'm doing is enlarging this. So right here, if you click the CC, that's closed captioning. Two will be the settings. Three will be theater mode, which is similar to full screen. And then the last one's full screen. Okay. And listen, if you're in theater mode or full screen, sometimes people get confused how to get out of there. Uh, you just press escape. Okay. That's the best way to get out of theater mode and full screen. And you should try the two. I like full screen better than theater mode. Theater mode, just uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a widescreen. wide screen. All right. To manage the bandwidth, how do you do that? So you click on the gear setting. See it in blue right here? And then you choose your quality. So it's automatic. This one's automatically 480. But you could, you know, you can go inside, change that. YouTube optimal viewing experience. Um, restrictive mode, like we said, is good for younger grade students. If you have slow speed internet, change the default to a lower quality setting, right? If your internet's very slow, go to a lower bandwidth. Um, use captions and subtitles for ESL, ELL students. And uh, let students independently watch videos and... and one of the best parts is that they could pause a video, go back, rewind, which they can't do during a regular lecture. All right, lesson check. Which feature would you use to assist a student that doesn't have proficiency in English? We just talked about this, right? ELL students should have what? Closed captioning and subtitles. Which video quality setting should you try if you're having difficulty getting a video to load? The lowest one there, right? Not HD. You want to do 360 is the lowest one. The lowest of the ones they've, they've offered you, right? Um, which of the following statements about restrictive mode are accurate? So what do we know about restrictive mode? It filters out inappropriate content, and it's connected to Google Safe, Church, Google Safe Search. It's not 100% effective, as I said. And the other one, it does, no, it doesn't pre prevent head injuries. That's a rid ridiculous. Um... Which of the following are benefits to using full screen mode? Okay, it's easy to read captions because it's much larger. larger, um, Less distractions, right? Easier for students to see. And that's it. It's not going to increase volume. All right, so we're coming up to the end here. Unit 11, check. So you've been asking students to watch short videos for homework instead of reading the text. 
students seem prepared for your class, but you're wondering how many of your students are actually watching the videos. Which of the sharing options below might help you best gauge compliance of your class um, and allow you to include some comprehension questions? So, embed the video in a Google form, right? Because you can ask follow up questions. Um, you're working on your sub plans for tomorrow and you've got the perfect video to kick off the class. Your second period students can be juvenile and you really don't want to risk the fallout of students uh, reacting to a comment or a related video displayed alongside the lesson opener. So how do you share the video to your substitute teacher? How do you share it? Embed the video in a Google slide deck. Okay, remember, um, you don't want to, it says here, you don't want students reacting to a comment or, or, or related video. So just put it in a slide deck and that's all they're going to see, just that one video. So there's not going to be much of a distraction there. Uh, which YouTube filters help narrow searches? Again, we went over this and I think it was the second section here. You can go by length, how long is the video, playlist, and channel. Tags, that, that doesn't have to do with filters. Normal, normally, the internet is quite speedy at your school, but it's been slow for the past week. Other teachers are complaining about the technology resources not being reliable. Now, you know how engaged students are when you use video in your class, but you don't want other teachers to give up on YouTube. You send an email to your colleagues with a couple of quick tips. So basically, here the internet's slow, and your other teachers, other teachers in the school are complaining that, that um, uh, you know, YouTube isn't working, let's say. What tip are you going to give them? Well, preload the videos and change the resolution, right? You can go in and you can change to a lower resolution. And something else we didn't talk about, you could always preload a YouTube video. So that is you open up the video and give it a second. And you should see at the bottom, um, like uh, the, the length bar, you'll see it to turn white kind of. And it'll go more and more and more. So you can preload a video and you could change the resolution. Which settings and controls with YouTube are built to help optimize the viewing experience? How do you optimize the viewing experience? Remember, those are the four that are underneath a video. Subtitles, restrictive mode, quality settings, view mode, all four of them. They all can help you optimize the viewing experience. Number six, a colleague of yours has been collecting video links in a Google Doc. They want to share with their students. You explained to her that she could use a playlist feature in YouTube instead. Which of the following advantages to use uh, are advantages to using playlist over a list of links in Google Docs? So what are an advantage of playlist instead of having all these links on a Google Doc, right? Why would you want to have a YouTube playlist instead of just a, a, a Google Doc with just a bunch of links? Well, you can quickly add a video to a playlist directly from YouTube without having to open up the doc and copy the link, right? Um, playlists continually play for all videos. If it's just a Google Doc with a list of different links, you got to click on each one. And students can save your playlist to their own YouTube channel. So they, they're always on YouTube anyway, right? They can just open it up and there they have it. Uh, number seven, Mr. Garcia found a channel with content continually relevant to his curriculum. What YouTube features should he use to be notified when new content is uploaded? So he wants to be notified. What should he do? subscriptions right and notifications so what features should he use to be notified he has to do subscriptions and he has to click that little bell to be notified all right that's it i'll go back that's it for unit 11 um don't forget you can find the the powerpoint below in the description and you can also find a link to my google certified trainer page if you want um to contact me there